Do you fear death? Do you fear climate change? Do you fear that your house will burn down? Do you fear the coronavirus? Welcome to this book review on the book Philosophy of Fearism. I'm Casper Rene Johansson and I'm your YouTube philosopher. Right here's the book Philosophy of Fearism by uh, Desh Super. It has actually won uh, five uh, international book rewards back in 2015. So it's an award-winning philosophy book. Now, uh, first off, I'll tell you something about the author, Desh uh, Super, who has uh, sent me his uh, book personally. Now, Desh Super, he is uh, a Hong Kong-based philosopher, and he's a, a co-founder of uh, something called Fearism Study in uh, Nepal. And he's actually the go-to guy in this philosophy of fearism, which is actually getting quite big in the East. And also it's getting more and more known here in the, in, in the West after this book. Uh, first off, I would like to show you a, uh, a phobia list that's uh, here in, in, in the back. A long list of uh, fears uh, one can, can have. And this, uh, I'm very glad that I'm not suffering from this uh, phobia. Philosophobia, fear of philosophers, <laughs> fear of philosophy. That's uh, that wouldn't be quite uh, good if I had the fear of philosophy. So no um, philosophobia for, for me. But everything is fear, according to this super, because life is conducted, directed, and controlled by fear. Now this super, he doesn't go into any uh, metaphysic. Or, or a metaphysical explanation of uh, why fear is uh, present in the world. That's not his, uh, his uh, approach here. But he does go into everything in human existence, everything in, that has something to do with the humans, human beings, uh, our, our daily life and our, our doing and our history, everything that stems from fear. Uh, even in bi biology, we have this uh, amygdala in our brain. Uh, that's the center where fear comes from. Everything, no matter what you do, it is based on fear. That's his main idea here. Even in the in the animal kingdom, you have a why does a a, a rabbit run when it uh, sees the, the wolf. Well, it's a fear, fear of getting eaten. It's a uh, fear of uh, dying. So it runs from the, the wolf or the fox. Uh, but also, why does the rabbit even need food? Why does it uh, go around uh, want to have food? Well, it's hungry. Why is it hungry? Because it fears it will die if it doesn't eat. So that's uh, basically the idea that a rabbit seeks food because it's uh, afraid of dying. And, and that's the same with us, our, our people. But everything we do is from fear, even uh, inventors. Why do we invent stuff? Sell your phone. I would be afraid that my whole life, if I had to call somebody, I just have to run home or find a, what if I don't have a phone, then I have to find a f phone. Now I can eliminate that fear by inventing the cellular phone. So inventions comes from fear, according to Desh Super. Why do, why do I get a driver's license? Why drive a car? Well, I fear I have to walk ex for an extremely long time and it would be easier and uh, I would have less fear about going some place that's a long way if I have a car, if I have a driver's license. So that's kind of the reason why I, uh, the basic reason why I, I get a driver's uh, license, that's because of fear, according to De Super. So everything is from fear. We, people, we have lots more fears than animals, because animals have a basic uh, consciousness. That's this idea here. The more consciousness you have, the more fear you have. Because the more knowledge you have, the more fear you have. Now the whole idea is the more you know, the more stuff you know, 
the more fear you have. And you can, you can see that from your own life. I have more fears now than I was when I had a, was a kid, one can say, because I know more stuff. I know more shit can happen to me, to uh, my daughter, to my wife. All stuff can happen. I know that. If you remove the amygdala from, say, a mouse, the mouse doesn't have any fear and the mouse will not be afraid of the cat. They have tried that and one can see the mouse is not afraid of the cat anymore. So it could be eaten by the cat. So fear is useful. It makes the mouse stay away from the cat, which is a very good idea if you're a mouse. Fear also has its positive elements because it's the basic drive. It's an important drive, but it can also go wrong. It's, uh, it's, it's everything. It's not, uh, it's not just good. It's not just bad. It just is. Fear is, is a primus uh, motus, one can say. The, the rabbit fear the fox because it's afraid of get, getting eaten. It's a, it's a, a, a fear of thunder and noises because it doesn't know what's particularly going on, so it's kind of afraid of the unknown. Well, people know a lot of things what's going on, so we fear even more. If there's extreme weather for a while, we fear, wow, is this climate change really going on? Are we all gonna gonna die in a, in a cataclysmic uh, climate uh, change uh, catastrophe because we know stuff right but it's also a, a post positive uh, motivator this fear now this super he comes into a very good example in uh, this book where you go to the exam if I have fear about the exam What's going to happen at the exam? How will I be doing at the exam? What happens uh, after the exam? Do I get a good evaluation and so forth? I have some fear about that. Now that fear motivates me to study, to read up on the subject, really read thoroughly up on the f subject and study it in order to get a good exam because I fear a bad exam. So that's a positive motivator of that fear that I, that I work hard, that I, that I study to, uh, to get a good evaluation at the exam. Now, if I didn't have any fear about the exam and I was kind of non nonchalant, you know, I can do this, I'm not afraid, it's just an exam. I just, uh, I just go up there and uh, talk to the examiner. What can happen? That's uh, a big possibility that I will fail my exam and my entire life, if it's a very important exam, uh, that I can do over, it will fuck up my life. Maybe I, I will not become uh, a, a doctor if I didn't study to the exam. So if I didn't have any fear, stuff would go wrong. wrong. Kind of like the if you remove the fear center from, from the rat, it would just go up to the snake and get eaten because it's not afraid of the snake, which is important for the rat to be afraid of the snake so it will stay away from the snake. So that's the important thing here. Now, so for this super and a small amount, the right amount of fear is good, especially at the exam. If I'm too afraid of going to uh, the exam and I study maybe too hard and I, I, I study right up until the point where I get to the exam and I'm so nervous at the exam and I'm so afraid of just uttering the words because, you see, that's too much fear and that can actually also make you fail the exam because you're too nervous, you're too afraid of the exam. So that's not good. You have to have a, an, a controlled medium amount of fear. So actually, during the course of uh, his uh, long book, De Super, he comes to a sort of uh, Aristotle middle way, one can say. That, that one should strive towards the middle ground of fear if it's possible because he also admits you cannot escape fear, it's always with us. Kind of like the fear of death, it's always, always with us. Even from when we first get the knowledge, the consciousness that we one day will die, 
we're afraid of it the rest of our life. Not all the time. You can be afraid of death all the time, especially if you get sick. And that's not healthy for you, but, but most of us, we're not afraid of death all the time. The very, very radical thing about uh, Mr. Super's uh, book here, Philosophy of Fearism, that's uh, the very radical idea that one can uh, be uh, rational towards one, uh, one's fear and, and kind of mediate it yourself. And he has some radical thoughts, some thought-provoking thoughts, really thought-provoking, that a lot of uh, mental diseases, like depression, they are actually not really mental disease like the like we, we think of it. They are actually fear, and they should be treated as the patient has fear. And he has radical ideas that that uh, fearism, a fearology, should go into medicine areas areas of uh, medicine because the guy or woman who has depression is more afraid. A lot of your problem stems because you have too much fear and you haven't mediated yourself towards a more uh, a rational uh, Aristotle golden middle way uh, fear. But the main idea also for this super is that uh, one should uh, kind of leave one's fear a lot of things we do, we do that to relieve our fear. So that's also why our actions are based on fear. That's because we're always trying to relieve our fears. That's why everything stems from fear, because we're always trying to relieve our fears. This is important for the super. If you fear to live in the dark, switch on the light. If you fear to walk alone, walk with a friend. If you are sick, live with others. If you fear about superstition and blind belief, ignore them. If you fear about conditional reflex, understand the meaning differently. If you have diabetes, eat less and do exercise. If you fear blood pressure, control food and do exercise. If you want to avoid normal diseases, take care of cleanliness. If you fear about extremist thought, Try to minimize it. If you fear about greed, control it. If you fear about nuclear weapons, ignore it. If you fear relatives, if you fear relatives, face them normally. If you have fear of thought, give it up. If you fear of religion, minimize religious activities. If you fear depression, try to control it. If you fear death, try to generalize the fear of death and it goes on but the important here is a proper solution to these problems is that we have to be self-controlled wise and brave he who is able to have these things becomes successful wise and brave it sounds kind of like aristotle's uh, 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 virtuous uh, man this uh, who has uh, phronesis, you know, phronesis, uh, this uh, cleverness in order to uh, maintain and control your, your fear. So, so that's uh, where philosophy comes in. It helps in your fears that through philosophy and self control you can cure yourself from these uh, fears, even a fear like depression. So very far broken. There's a lot of very, very strange fears one can have. There's extremely a lot of fears out there. And we have a big phobia list in this book. Like enable phobia. Fear of looking up. Let's see. This is, this is not a particular good uh, fear to have. Domatophobia. Domatophobia. Fear of houses or being in a house. That's very problematic if you have that fear. Let's go, go on here. You're going to have the fear of having good news. Euphobia. Venustraphobia. That means fear of beautiful women. That's, uh, I'm glad I do not have that fear since I'm married to one. It's kind of like an east meet west 
philosophy book, so it's a, an intro into Eastern thinking that, that strives towards uh, a Western thinking. And it's a and it's very new perspective for me, this uh, looking at fear from all these uh, kind of perspectives that's in this book. So I highly recommend it. But, but a criticism is a it's it's kind of like a criticism that I could give a lot of uh, philosophies that uh, are maybe a bit uh, similar in its uh, in its uh, construction like this because it's it's a it's a reductional uh, philosophy it's a philosophy that re reduces everything to one thing this one reduces everything to fear uh, my own process philosophy which I very much like, and I always talk about philosophy, process philosophy on this channel. That's also a reductional philosophy that reduces everything to the concept of a process. But yeah, you can say everything is process. You can say everything is fear. You can say everything is about power. You can say everything is about the sexual drive, and so on. Uh, but that's a general criticism one can give to this reductional philosophy. But that doesn't mean they have something about them. An important lesson, an important understanding, and there is a, an important understanding in this one. And also in uh, the process philosophy I like. But, but that's just a, a general uh, criticism of uh, these kind of philosophies uh, from me, from a philosophical, critical perspective. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hopefully will see you in the, the next video. Remember to subscribe to my channel.